Hey everybody, what is going on? Hexlex here, got another Master Duel video for you. We're gonna kick this season off with Sprite because of course, this is my favorite deck. So <laughs> what better way to start? Um, not only that though, this isn't the only reason why I wanna start with Sprite. I actually wanna talk about pure Sprite in particular right now because the deck is in a really, really good spot. Actually a better spot than it's been uh, in since pretty much it took a lot of its major hits like when Jet uh, went to one, which is now thankfully back up to two, as well as, of course, Nimble Beaver also going to one. Uh, actually, if I pull up Untapped over here, and we take a look at the meta tier list, sorting by Diamond and Master Rank, uh, Sprite is actually way up there this season. It's the currently fourth highest win rate deck at 55.7%, and I think yesterday it was actually in second place. Now, granted, of course, win rate alone does not necessarily mean everything. You do also have to take into account, of course, the popularity rating, and of course, Sprite does have the lowest of these top four popularity ratings. So, naturally, a deck with lower popularity is going to tend to trend to a higher win rate, uh, because the less people that are on it, the more likely the people who are still on the deck are uh, either diehard fans and or experts, which uh, I'm definitely the former. I'd like to consider myself the latter as well. Um, but, uh, so that's something you gotta pay attention to, right? Uh, you know, certainly, although Ubel only has like 0.6% higher win rate, the fact that it has 18% popularity as opposed to 1.5 uh, definitely is more indicative of the power level, right? Relative to the win rate, because, you know, so many people are playing it. There are people who are non experts, more people who are non experts playing it than against something like Sprite. But I just think it's really cool that. Sprite is doing so well, and I mean, I mean, if you take a look here at the d breakdown, this is like pure Sprite with maybe some U Bell tech occasionally, but uh, which we did last season. Um, this season, however, I am not on the U Bell cards anymore, but we are still on Triple Nightmare Throne and the Dark Beckoning Beast. So uh, even without the U Bell, I do still really like playing Three Nightmare Throne because this is the reason I think why pure Sprite is in such a good spot, right? Um, you know, we're in a meta where one card combos really, really matter, and Spray is inherently a deck of extenders, right? Uh, the only one card starter the deck has is called Starter. So, um, you want to be able to play a build that's got as many one card uh, combos as possible. Dark Beckoning Beast, if you open that and no other, like, Sprite monsters or anything, that'll get you a Sprite board. Uh, Nightmare Throne to search the Beckoning Beast is the same, but also the opening of the Spirit Gates as well. Because what you can do is you can activate opening of the spirit gates, normal summoning beckoning beast, beckoning beast F, add another opening of the spirit gates, link off the uh, beckoning beast for Almirage, right? Then we can use our on field opening of the spirit gates to discard our in hand opening of the spirit gates, bring back the beckoning beast. Then you can link off into Elf. Elf, bring back the Beckoning Beast again. Overland Gigantic, Gigantic for blue, blue for a jet. Boom, now you can do sprite plays. So, um, yeah, with that, that gives us nine one card starters. And in addition to the two sprite starters, makes for a total of 11, which is pretty on par with actually a lot of other meta decks. That's something I'm gonna be kind of like pointing out more this season, because it's something I've been doing a little bit more often in deck building, because I've really been counting how many one card starters my deck has, and also how many hand traps the deck has, right? And making sure both numbers are at a good ratio. So again, we have 11 one card starters between three Beckoning Beast, plus three Nightmare Throne, plus three Opening of the Spirit Gates, plus two Sprite Starter. Uh, and as far as hand traps go, we have two Valor, plus three Maxi, uh, plus the three Ash Blossom, that's eight right there, and Nibiru makes nine, 10, 11, 12, which is not bad. I usually aim for somewhere around 12 to 15. 15 is definitely up there in terms of the number of hand traps, but somewhere in that range, right? So I think ratio-wise, uh, you're able to do pretty well for yourself with Sprite. And again, I think that's going to be crucial in this particular format. Not even in this particular format, but just where Yu-Gi-Oh! was at right now, power level-wise, right? Again, you got to be thinking about, do I have one-card plays? Can I get to them consistently? Can I open at least one, but if not, ideally multiple hand traps consistently as well? Uh, so making sure those ratios are on point. Uh, we are still on the Hero Kid package as well. Uh, Hero Kid, of course, is very, very good when dumped by Sprint and then later revived by Elf to summon two more copies from the deck. And even if you open it, it's really not that big of a deal uh, because all you have to do is open any one of your other sprite 
cards in order for your plays to be live. It's kind of one of the biggest strengths of Sprite, right? Like, a lot of the time, Max C itself is a combo piece simply because it's level 2. Uh, if you've got a level 2 monster and you have a Sprite monster, you have access to a full Sprite board, and it doesn't matter what the level 2 monster is, it could even be a vanilla, right? I mean, really, if you want to get down to it, um, you know, especially if you're on Sprint and dumping something like Hero Kid or the Nimble Package, it could be any monster plus a level 2 monster. Uh, doesn't even have to be two level twos, uh, but again, that is better to go into the gigantic. Um, I think it's going to be one of those situations where I don't necessarily feel the need to do a full card-by-card -card breakdown, because I've already talked about pretty much all of the cards here. Uh, we're on two of each of the main deck sprite monsters, including Red and Carrot. I really like playing two of each of these, because not only is it good to just open an extender, well, in general, but uh, Red and Carrot are, like, two of the best extenders, like, <laughs> in all of Yu-Gi-Oh!, in my opinion, uh, because they also come with negates, so uh, they're extenders and they're end board pieces, making, again, two of each, I think, not, not too bad to play. We're on the Melfi package, which is, of course, one Caddy, one Penny, and then one Herald of the Arclight. You could also play, uh, if you really wanted to, and I don't even think this is bad, I almost did put this in, the Merry Melfies in addition to the Herald of the Arclight. That way you have the option to go for a bounce if you want to. Um, I would probably cut the Onibimaru if I was going to play that, but I still also really like Onibimaru Soul Sweeper. It's not quite as important in the Sprite Extra Deck now that SP Little Knight is here, but it is still a very good card. Uh, another cool thing about Pure Sprite in particular is that the Extra Deck is relatively wide open. Like, um, you could cut the Melfi Engine if you wanted, and then you'd have this spot back with the Herald of the Arclight, as well as the Melfi of the Forest. That's two main and Extra Deck spots if you feel you need them for other stuff, right? Again, ODB Maru is pretty cuttable. Mosquito, I really, really like because this is not only an excellent Zeus pilot, but also enables OTKs, you know, in certain situations. But uh, this is also not even that necessary to play either. Um, I would consider cards necessary to play for Sprite. Uh, two Gigantic, you definitely want those. Uh, Downard Zeus is always good. Almirage is actually always good in this deck. Um... Well, I mean, I don't know, I guess if you're not on the Dark Backing Beast, it's not quite as great, but it does still tend to be pretty good. Uh, obviously, you always play IP, 2 Elf. Sprint, actually, you really only play this if you're on, like, Hero Kid or the Nimbles. Like, because Sprint dumping a Sprite monster is just not really doing anything. So, I don't know, Sprint is actually not necessarily always played, believe it or not. SP definitely is, and then you do want another IP target besides SP. Uh, I still think Mech Knight Crusade Avermax is one of the best ones. Uh, it's still very hard to out when made with an IP. Uh, of course, it's not really possible to battle over it in most circumstances. Uh, on top of that, un being unable to be targeted or destroyed definitely makes for a very sticky monster. So, all right, I think that covers pretty much the whole list here. So let's go ahead and start watching some of these games. All right, our first opponent is going to be on Salamangre. These are all going to be games from the new season. Usually I start off a season by, you know, having some leftover games, but not this time around. Uh, anyway, we're going to be going second here. And as you can see, we have an excellent opening hand. This kind of opening hand right here is, like, literally exactly why I think ratioing out the deck, like I was talking about in the profile, is so important. To be able to open hands like this, where we have access to a one-card starter, and again, ideally, multiple hand traps here. So, but I was going to leave the side at Mining Pitch the Veiler. I thought it was going to be Math Mech, which is why I didn't Ash Blossom here. I actually did consider it, though, because I am also holding C and Imperm, so... Um, I can afford to throw out a uh, hand trap, you know, a bit earlier here, but turned out to be the Gazelle, so uh, decided that I would save the Ash Blossom for the uh, Mirage Stallio. And I did throw out the Maxi here. Uh, the reason that I activated Maxi at this point in time uh, when the Gazelle was on the field is because, of course, they could potentially link off into the Link 1 Bay Links, right? Uh, Call by the Grave is going to end up eating the Maxi. That's fine. I'd actually kind of rather it eat Maxi than Ash Blossom. Um, there are some hands, like hands where I already have one card plays. I think I would, and also multiple hand traps. I would rather my maxi get negated than other stuff, which sounds kind of weird, but, um, you know, at this point I'm looking to stop their plays more than anything else, so. Alright, Mirage Shalio coming down here, and like I said, I am going to throw out the Ash Blossom here, holding the Imperm in case they have a follow-up. Um, you know, it's not out of the realm of really any cyber stack for, to be able to, uh, you know, just randomly toss out the, uh, <laughs> the Math Mech Circular or something, so, anyway. 
Sprite Red's an excellent top deck. I'm actually going to lead with Nightmare Throne, though, and see if I can't bait some interaction here. One very, very good thing about playing Nightmare Throne and the Dark Beckoning Beast package in Sprite is that a lot of the time you can bluff so to speak, like you can just kind of like pretend you're a U-Bell deck, but in your opening plays and a lot of people will kind of throw out their Ash Blossoms and Imperms and Veilers really early on this stuff. And then if you're holding a Sprite monster, it's fine because you just special like go in a Gigantic and then you're off to the races, right? Uh, so here I'm going to grab the opening of the Spirit Gates. I'm going to go ahead and add another Dark Beckoning Beast once I have activated that. I'm going to normal summon another one and then special the red. Now I'm going to keep the Sprite Red and a level 2 on the board for as long as possible here. Because um, during the actual game itself, my opponent was you know constantly getting past priority. Now it could have been because of, because of the face down card, but I was also thinking about a hand trap as well. So uh, I'm actually going to link off the Dark Beckoning Beast for Almirage. We're going to use the opening to pitch the Beckoning Beast to grab, you know, the copy back from the graveyard. Now I can link off the Almirage and the Beckoning Beast for Sprite Elf. Still keeping up the red, by the way, so that way uh, we still have the monster negate. Now, I'm going to overlay the two Dark Beckoning Beasts here for the Gigantic, and the reason that I'm doing that uh, is so that way I can keep it underneath the Elf. Because what you might think, like, well, wouldn't you want to use Elf so that way, you know, this has 3200 attack and then you can OTK more easily? Um, but all my opponent has is one defense mode monster, so uh, between blue, jet, and then gamma burst, I'm actually able to OTK with what I have on board already. So I'm going to keep the gigantic uh, target protected because it's definitely a very important effect. Alright, here's blue, blue for jet, and there's that gamma burst. Moving to battle phase, I'm going to battle over the rush Shalia with blue because it is my weakest monster. And damage calc, we're going to go for the gamma burst and then swing in with everything for lethal. And opponent shows us that they not only did have the imperm, but also the maxi. So the playing the red early, as well as putting the elf or the gigantic under the elf zone and not using elf to make gigantic, both super duper matter here. Now, granted, I definitely think my opponent should have played maxi when I uh, extra normal summoned uh, the dark beckoning beast. Oh wait, I call by it. Never mind. <laughs> That's right, that's why they saved Maxi until the end, because I call by it last turn. JK, JK. Um, or did they call by mine? No, they call by mine. That's what it was. That's what it was. But um, if it had been, you know, like an Ash Blossom or potentially a Veiler or something, we would have had the protection against it. So, um, But yeah, I thought that was a pretty good going second game from, uh, from us here. So I wanted to start off by showing that one. Um, and yeah, I, I, I think that that was a, again... Pretty clean OTK. That's usually how you'll end your games there is the, the game of burst OTK. But, all right, uh, let's go ahead and jump into the next one. All right, going up against a U-Bell deck here for this next game. They are playing the Ibli, which I'm like, eh, I don't really think it's that great in U-Bell. I don't think it's bad, not by any means, but um, I don't think it's necessarily optimal. It's a, it's a cute gimmick. We're actually going second again here, funnily enough. Um, opponent's going to lead with the opening of the Spirit Gates, adding the Dark Beckoning Beast, and they're going to normal summon it, activating the effect going for another opening. So I figured they probably had Chaos Summoning Beast or Samsara Lotus in hand already when they used Beckoning Beast to add opening. It turns out they have one for one, pitching the Gruesome Grave, Grave Squirmer. So we're naturally going to chain the Max C to that. Um, okay, they don't have a response here. I was trying to remember if they did or not. Alright, so there's the Samsara D Lotus, but... Rather than, of course, go into the D-Lotus effect, it looks like they're just going to pivot into the SP Little Knight. And then passing back over to me here. Yeah, this is going to be kind of one of those shorter games due to the bug. Uh, they actually have their own maxi here, but we have the cross out designator because, you know. <laughs> uh, actually, did we open that? I was going to say because we just opened better. Did we draw that off maxi? I know we did open it. Okay. But... Uh, one SP Little Knight is just so easy to play through here. So I'm going to opening for the Beckoning Beast and the Normal Summon it, but you'll notice I did not activate the Beckoning Beast effect here. I could have just Normal Summoned Melfi Caddy as well, but it was actually optimal to Normal Beckoning Beast and not activate the effect because, of course, if I had activated the effect, 
then they could have just simply activated SP Little Knight, banished both. Uh, sure, I get my opening still, but, you know, I don't really have the ability to make plays without a level 2 monster to then special the jet. I could special summon Caddy during the end phase, but that's it. Um, but the reason it was still optimal, again, to not activate the effect is because of the opening on the field. With this, we could still use the Beckon Beast if we needed to for another level 2 body to make plays. But, um... Gonna activate the blue here, and they're just gonna concede in response to that. Uh, because they know at this point that, you know, even, like, I was gonna, of course, use blue to add red here to further help counter the SP, but they didn't even necessarily know I was gonna do that, and they can concede anyway there, because they know even if I just simply add jet and then special it, now I have too many bodies on the board for the one SP to be able to out, uh, you know, the, the board by itself. And, um, of course, as I said before, with Gamma Burst especially, it is pretty easy to OTK uh, when you're on the crackback going second here. As long as you can, you know, do it into a clear board. So, alright. Uh, yeah, I have one more game for us here. Let's go ahead and finish off with that duel. Okay, our final opponent is on Horus Phantom Knight. A deck that I have not played, I think, pretty much since Horus came out. Oh, and they, they're playing Adventure as well, too. So, I should get back to this deck at some point. Another going second game! I actually didn't even plan this, but we are on all going second games for this one. Uh, opening the double Ash Blossom. As soon as I see the Horus Field spell, I'm like, okay, it's pretty easy. I'm just going to Ash the Emsetti here. Uh, because after I do so, it'll leave them with two cards in hand, uh, which will be pretty good for me, obviously, if this resolves. Unfortunately, they do have the Call By, which, if you think about it, is like is pretty statistically unlikely for them to have a counter here, which also made it a good point to Ash Blossom. You know, 60 cards... Two cards remaining in hand. The odds of them being called, one of them being called by our cross out were pretty low. I guess Gamma could have been one of the uh, possible responses as well, but uh, they have the triple attack here too, which is pretty brutal because without opening, all I really have here is the Melfi Caddy. Um, as far as like you know, a level two monster to make plays, I'm really banking on top decking a sprite monster now, or Beckoning Beast, or opening, or Nightmare Throne. To be fair, that is a lot of top decks. That's like what 17 right off the top top of my head right there um no actually 21 because of starter as well so that's like over half of our deck i mean it's over half of our deck you know not even including the uh the, the our opening hand so and of course what was milled now granted what was milled did include some cards that we would like to you know top deck like the blue the throne and the jet uh, what did they hit they hit a uh silent boots right uh, oh, I haven't used it yet, but I believe they did hit a Boots. Yep, it's right here. So, they have that in the graveyard. They're also, of course, going to set up the uh, Torn Scales with their Rusty Bardish here. So, alright, from there, it looks like Silent Boots is going to banish to add the Fog Blade. They have a Fog Blade set as well, which is worth noting. Torn Scale bringing itself back and then gets to use its effect, pitching the Fog Blade in order to send the Ancient Cloak. Ancient Cloak F going to banish itself in order to add the Phantom Knight's Ragged Gloves. Uh, from there, they get to use the, um, what is it called? The, the, the King Stark, that one. Uh, pitching that Ragged Gloves in order to send a Dumatath. Alright, Fog Blade bringing back the Ragged Gloves, which now with the Torn Scales is going to make the rank 3... Breaksword. Breaksword F activating, uh, as well as... Oh, that's just a gain attack. And then they're going to use the Rusty Bardish to pop the Breaksword. Okay, so this is actually answering a question I've had about Phantom Knights before. Is that, is there anything you can do with Breaksword on turn one? Looks like you could just pop it and go for two fours. And they're just pivoting into IP. Although, to be fair, though, like, does that, does that do anything? I mean, I guess they could maybe bring this back later? But, like... Could they now have just linked the two level threes into the IP as well? I guess, I, I, I think the only significant difference here is that you're cycling one of your break swords into the graveyard, but again, I don't necessarily know how optimal that is, but we'll see. All right, Wing's gonna be their last card that they're sending there. I guess it's not horrible. It could set you up into a Zeus later, potentially. Um, <laughs> wow, that was a pretty quick concede for me. What did I top deck there? Beckoning Beast? I should have at least tried to normal summon back in beast. Although to be fair, they have the they have the fog blade. That's why I can see it so quickly, because they have the fog blade face down. It's like, I don't know. I could have normal summoned the backing beast and let them flip over the fog blade, but I also kind of figured like <laughs> I don't have a follow-up after that, so I'll probably just concede at this point. Plus, of course, they also still have the IP uh on the field as another form of disruption. Like they could just make 
Uh, I'm pointing at my screen like you can see me. I'll use my mouse cursor. They could just use the IP here and the Dumatef here in order to make an SP. So they really have multiple ways to disrupt here. And of course, you might think, well, okay, sure, but they don't have a lot of follow because they have no cards in hand. But the thing about Phantom Knight is that, um, oh, you know what? This is why they use Break Sword is because it. It puts these two back in the graveyard instead of having them be banished. Although, to be fair, you could also just make Levier and do the same thing. But I guess that's another way of doing it, just uh, popping the break sword as well. So, but yeah, with like Ragged Gloves and Torn Scale and all their stuff in the graveyard, they just would have had all the follow-up they needed right then and there. They still have the wing too. So anyway, uh, that is going to go ahead and do it for this video. Thank you so very much for watching. Let us now just move on to our outro. Hey everybody, Hexlex here. Just want to give you a huge thanks for watching all the way to the very end of the video. Uh, believe it or not, that is actually one of the best ways that you can support the channel, is by watching the videos in their entirety. But there are many ways in which you can support the channel if you are so interested. Uh, the names that you're seeing on screen here, I gotta give an extra special thanks to, because these are people who have chosen to either become a member on YouTube, which if you're interested, you can do as well via the join button next to the subscribe button down there uh, or have signed up over on patreon and become members there link to that is going to be in the description below uh, without the support that is being offered by again all the people that you're seeing on screen right here um, I would not be able to take the time to dedicate to uploading daily YouTube videos so thank you thank you so very much but uh, there are also other ways you can support as well um, again link to the description below if you like my deck tracker that you'll see in a lot of my videos the untapped companion you can download that that for free and if you use my affiliate link down there uh, then that also goes a long way towards supporting the channel uh, that's again free so is subscribing here on YouTube that's also free and a huge way to support uh, you can also uh, check out twitch once again linked in the description below following and subscribing over there will not only support as well but also give you notifications of when I go live if you want to catch some of the live streams um, but really no matter how you choose to support uh, it all adds up and it all definitely means the world so thank you each and every one of you uh, for now this is Hexlex I'm gonna be signing out but more than that, I'm hoping that you have a fantastic day.